Hello everybody and welcome to another new player investigator guide for the Hemlock Vale investigators. Today we're going to be talking about Kate Winthrop. If this is your first time seeing one of these new player guides, uh, Travis has built a deck oh. using just the Hemlock Vale cards and the co uh, revised core set. <laughs> uh, and we're going to be talking about these cards with just these in mind, uh, focusing on like a new player and what your objective is for this one. Uh, and this one in true Travis guide fashion is actually pretty deep for a seeker one. There's a lot of different directions you can take in this. Uh, so we're going to be talking about uh, this deck, some upgrades, as well as a different kind of build that you can do in its own separate upgrade path. Uh, well, it's easy when you like have such a strong core set to work with. Right? Exactly, right? Um, so, Kate Winthrop, her stat line is 2424. You begin the game with Flux Stabilizer in play inactive side face up. I'm going to just step away from her for a second and we're going to go look at Flux Stabilizer inactive. Yeah, we uh, it's a permanent. After a clue is placed on Flux Stabilizer, search your bonded cards or discard pile for one copy of Aetheric Current and shuffle it into your deck and flip Flux Stabilizer. We're going to get to those Aetheric Currents in a second, so just hold your horses on that. Uh, the permanent side on the other one for active is when a clue is placed on Asset Control, get plus two skill value for the next skill test this phase. Um, it's a lot of moving pieces to basically uh, what you are doing with Kate Winthrop is you're turning your clues into unexpected courages. They're giving you plus two skill value. Her lightning bolt ability is move one clue from Kate Winthrop to a science or tool asset you can uh, asset control with no clues on it, which is going to give you the flux stabilizer um, ability on it. So the first clue goes on flux stabilizer, gives you an event. All other clues uh, that you use are now going to go on to your... Um, your other asset's going to give you an unexpected courage. Uh, her deck building is Seeker 05, Science 04, Insight Level 01, and Neutral 05. Yeah, Seeker 05. Yeah. <laughs> there are some insights that we're going to be talking about in this uh, collection of cards here, but she is basically yeah. just Seeker 05. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure you just said the same thing like three times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty much. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, all right, let's talk about her other signatures, which are the Aetheric Current, Yugath, and Yoth. Uh, you, uh, they're bonded, which means they are connected to the flux stabilizer. They have bonded into one. Uh, zero cost event for the Yugath current. Uh, fight, move all claw assets you control to Kate Winthrop. For this attack, you may use book instead of fist. If you succeed in the attacked enemy is non-elite, you may exhaust it and move it to any location. Draw one card and then flip flux stabilizer. This is then will allow you to grab the other one that you haven't grabbed. So let's just say you did Yugath Firth. We now have Yoth. Uh, it's an evade action. Move all clue assets you control to Kate Winthrop. For this evasion attempt, you may use book instead of foot. If you succeed in target, uh, the target of this evasion is not elite. Shuffle in the counter deck, draw one card, and flip Flux Stabilizer. Notably, when you play these events, they go into your own discard pile, which means that you'll be able to draw them again in the future and play them again and again and again. Um... It's weird to me that they chose Yagoth and Yoth as the subtypes for these kind of. It's so like Yoth makes sense from like a, a gameplay perspective where they want you you're using book instead of foot because that's like tied to the Forgotten Age campaign where mm -hmm. foot's really important, but we haven't really seen a campaign with Yagoth where like fists would be important, and then like her flux stabilizer in previous games made so gates couldn't spawn right effective yeah. gates to other worlds. Yagoth is like functionally uh, another. I mean, it's, it's sometimes depicted as Pluto, mm -hmm. um, but Yoth is just like underground. And there aren't really gates to <laughs> yeah. it. So, like, it, it's kind of weird to me that they chose the optimal flavor perspective well, for yeah, her flux stabilizer. If not through a gate that, like, maybe you She's actually just using the flux stabilizer to yeah, shovel yeah. into the ground. Yeah. Actually, yeah, like, actually, from uh, one of the stories from the is, is uh, based on called the mound. Um, there is, like, a, it's a literal mound that you, they dig in. There's a very long staircase. Like hmm. a gate. And you walk into it. Like you would. Yeah, but, like, it wouldn't. Through a gate. No. It's different, Bren. A gate's it's just like a very long. No, a gate's game. more like a. Uh, it's like an actual portal, right? Well, aren't stairs like a portal? Like those are like a portal to the upstairs of the house, right? I mean, like sort of. You can make an argument that the stairs are like kind of like a, uh, a gate in terms of uh, the the dreamlands, because mm -hmm. that's the typical way that people get through there. But there's other ways as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm just saying, all I'm saying is that stairs are like a gate. And it's still through your dreams, which is not, like, a physical staircase. No, like, Yoth is actually just, like, caverns under the ground. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not a different world or a different yeah, dimension. Yeah, but you can't get like there that. without a gate. Like, stairs or a big hole in the ground. Or it's a different concept. <laughs> <laughs> um, notably, uh, 
when you move a clue to a science or tool house you control, it's still a clue under your control, which means you can still spend it to advance the agenda. It doesn't actually just <laughs> oh, lock you out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you, that would be so funny. Yeah. So yeah. you use them freely because there's no downside until you hit her signature weakness, which is failed experiment, which is test brain three. Shit. This test gets plus one difficulty for each ASCII control with a clue on it. For each point you fail by, you must either take one horror or place one of your clues on your location. Uh, so this means that the clues that you have on your assets uh, can be placed on your location if you would fail. Like if this somehow becomes like a brain seven test and you draw the auto fail, uh, you can still place those clues on your assets on your location and not just like, you know, die. Yeah, this is a personal weakness. This is what we like to see from our yeah. weaknesses in the deck. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so is the failed experiment like the experiment that turned a dog into Kate Winthrop? Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah I made a huge mistake. It just stayed as a dog. <laughs> yeah. like... It was so much better. It was so, <laughs> it was so much better. Uh, I think gameplay, uh, Kate's gameplay loop is actually relatively simple, where you play science or tool assets and then turn those into unexpected courages. Place your clues yeah, on them, you grab clues. Yeah, just use them and then like, investigate better. Yeah. Uh, notably, I think that um, Kate is going to be also... Actually, no, that's not... That's for the expand. I was in expanded guide mode there. I'm going to stop that because yeah. that's not what we can be doing here. I do think here. she benefits from a larger card pool as well. Yes, she definitely does. Uh, especially <laughs> like, I think Scarlet Keys, if you are looking for, a, if you like Kate, I think she plays the clue drop archetype from that really well. Mm -hmm. That could be something that you can consider looking into. Um, but uh, this deck is actually relatively straightforward and there are some really cool cards that I'm very excited to talk about here. So why don't we start with the Hemlock Veil vale cards, which are... Uh, the microscope. This is a cool new asset. It's an item, tool science, which is what we're looking for. We're looking for either tool or science, but honestly, most of them are tool and science when it comes down to it, but that happens quite commonly. Yep. Uh, it's a one, it takes up a hand slot as, as a reaction after enemy or location is successfully evaded or defeated, you get to exhaust microscope and you get to place one resource on microscope as evidence. As a double action, you get to investigate. You get plus one book for this investigation for each evidence on microscope to a max of three book. If you succeed, you may spend up to two evidence to discover that many additional clues to your location. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Seems good. Yeah, it's basically, there's a card called Kukri, which is a neutral weapon that's not good. This is like a good version of that for the clue getting because, you know, it's like... It gets clues. It gets clues and it's good. Um, this is something that you could evade enemies as they come, but you, but you can also just like hang out with your guardian or your goon and just like watch them do stuff and like reap the benefits from it. Yeah, you just draw your enemy and you're like, kill it. And they do it and you're like, yeah, hey, extra clue. <laughs> yeah. And I think this is something that also like, um, with my experience with Microscope, I've played it a little bit. It's less that you're using it to like always do that double action, but rather just like, oh, here's a victory location. I'm going to just like expedite my clue getting process and, and get it done really Yeah, no, easily. like it's still, you're going to play like a pretty uh, typical book v. Shroud Seeker where you just have your magnifying glasses and your Dr. Milan or whatever, you know, like I investigate with my yeah. with my book. Yeah. And then sometimes you get a little extra from the other cards. Exactly. Uh, chemistry stat is a two cost asset, takes up the necklace slot, the accessory item, tool science. As an action, you can exhaust chem set, chemistry set to investigate. If you fail by exactly two, you discard chemistry set. If you succeed by exactly zero, you gain two resources. If you succeed by exactly two, draw one card. If you succeed by exactly four, discover one additional clue at your location. Um, this card actually is pretty sick. Um, yeah. And especially once we get to the upgrades, there's a lot of way for you to cheat this card to like trigger where you want to when you want to do it. Um, it's yep. good. Yeah, it's good. It's it's nothing like too flashy, but you can do a lot with it, especially once we get into some of our upgrades. Yeah, until you get to the upgrades, you must just play it, and like sometimes it gives you a bonus. You're mm. like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm mostly just but excited it's... to see Justin play this card with the crystal pendulum. <laughs> you sit there and be like, oh, uh, uh, you know, Dude, that's okay. Sidetracking from the video, but I have to set this like, hey, so Luke Robinson, yeah. uh, the Recall the Future the chemistry, chemistry set, set yeah. Crystal, Crystal pendulum. pendulum. Yeah, that sounds like a time. All right, Mask Mask. This is uh, the masks. Uh, they all cost one. Item Charm Mask. You only have one mask per investigator. Is it two offerings? Replenish one of these offerings after reveal a location or put a new location into play. As a lightning bolt, spend one offering, you get plus two brain or plus two book. Um, this is nice for Kate mm -hmm. because it helps you get over high shred locations. It also helps you defend yourself because uh, your brain is actually only two, which is yeah. probably the lowest seeker. I, I was going to say this actually like isn't... Uh you don't this is two guts <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like you probably don't need or want to be using it for the book value very often this is here to give you like plus two brain toys yeah, yeah your personal weakness is a brain test yep. so 
Yep. Yep. You know, we don't want to fail that. Yeah. Probably yeah. gonna anyway, but... It's yeah. also, like, even though it's limited the amount of times you can replenish it, it's very easy to just be like, hey, I want to be the person who moves into this location. And then your teammate should say, yeah. sure, Kate, do that. Yeah. And if they don't, well, you know, skill diff, right? Uh, thorough inquiry, two cost event, inside double, commits for a book, a wild, and a foot. Great so, symbols. like, great symbols. As this cost to play, thorough inquiry, you have to spend an action. An investigator's location, draw a combined total of five cards. Uh, in brackets and italics, you decide how many cards each investigator draws. That's just a whisper behind you if you're reading what, that card out loud. Yeah. What if I draw them faster, though? Oh, yeah. like, what if I'm physically faster? <laughs> yeah. I'll play thorough inquiry. I'll like, draw five. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, yeah. Still um, to rewind. I have new information. Yeah. <laughs> I can't um, remember which ones I drew. Yeah, yeah just shuffling them. Yeah. Yeah. Shh, we're good. Uh, two actions uh, is like a little bit harder for like your seeker if you're going to be getting clues. But if people need to be refreshed, you need to be refreshed. It's very easy to take two actions off your turn to you know refill your hands or your teammates hands well yeah like the two actions i don't think it's too bad because most of the time so if you would need the cards you're probably it's because you don't have cards to play for your setup and you yeah. don't mind spending two actions to draw yeah. five cards because if you're just going to sit there and draw cards to try and find your microscope or whatever anyway then five you might as well draw five. Yeah. and then if uh you're giving someone else cards it's because your fighter's gun has run out of bullets or something like that, and you need them now. And you're, like, and you're like, I will spend two actions instead of like having us die. Yeah. And likewise, on top of that, like if you are like doing well with your microscope, you maybe have hit the four on your chemistry set. You have some deductions that have been triggering. You're actually like probably tempo positive, so right? Positive. So you can like just also just spend the time to just get more juice or refill. And honestly, if you don't need the cards, the symbols that this card commits for are insane, right? Yep. Like really good symbols. They are. Yeah. Very especially good. for Kate, yes. right? Like, especially. Like I imagine they were play testing this and they were like, Kate's playing this, what symbol? Let's, let's give her uh, another perception and just yeah. manual decks in here. Yeah, you this can is, tell, this is, is just yellow privilege. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna say, you can tell it's because it's a yellow card. <laughs> yeah. So all that extra wilds there. Yeah. This was a green yeah. card, a book and foot only. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this, this was, if this was like a blue card, unrelated symbols to anything you might want to be doing. Yeah. Oh yeah, this would be like book and brain, dude. For yeah. Oh <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Yep. Alright, keeping this going, we got the Ravenous Mike in it. This is the unidentified, untranslated version, so you need to be able to <laughs> complete its mini quest to get the upgraded version into your deck. Two cost asset, soaks for one and one. Uh, uh, no slots. Uh, as an action, you search your bonded cards for uncanny growth and add it to your hand. You can see uncanny growth right next to it. One cost event, investigate. After this test resolves, place one resource on Ravenous Mike in it as a growth. For each point you succeed by, and then you set uncanny growth aside out of play. If you fail, return uncanny growth to your hand. Um, so I didn't actually like read this card before I put it in the deck. <laughs> uh, but I love the, unreser the research cards, and I think this guy's really neat, and he's science. And yes. I did double check that she could play the, the upgraded versions because upgrade versions, that was important. Yeah. But yeah, he's cool. Uh, if you didn't want him in your deck, you could definitely play a second manual deck. Oh, yeah. But easy. you should play this guy because he's like a little I, flower I, who eats things. I think he's also like super like legit in his upgrades as well. Um, I don't know what they do. Oh, they're they're very powerful. They're very powerful. Uh, the the, the uh, to translate it, if it has three or more growth on it, you move each growth to your resource pool as resources, and then record in your campaign log that you have classified a new species. That's so cool. Yeah. Um, so what's nice about this guy, um, is that your uncanny growth, as you are translating him, you also are going to be advancing the game in like getting clues in the process, which is really nice. Um, and then once we get to the upgrades, which we'll get to this, this, this plant turns into like a, an absolute boss. He has a science as well. So you can like store things on him. Yep. And a moths are in a floor. <laughs> Look at all those subtypes that don't mean anything. I know. I hope one day we get like flora synergy. That'd be yeah, cool. It would be. Some sort of Earthborn Rangers. Yeah, crossover. let's go crossover. Actually, like a, a botanist character. Yeah, I think that'd be really cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, tinker. Uh, this is a one cost event. Pl uh, fast play during your turn. Attached to a tink uh, sorry, a tinker mm -hmm. to a tool asset in your play area. Limo and per asset. Takes up one for your hand or accessory slot. Hey, do you remember all those uh, tools that we talked about earlier? Mm -hmm. Why don't you make them not take up a slot? And there's also going to be some tools, I think. I'm pretty sure magnifying glass is a tool. Yeah. Like, One thing, no, if you guys are playing, like, in paper and someone else wants to play Wilson Richard, this card is in both of the decks, and it's mm -hmm. good in both of them. Um, I would say I would talk to the Wilson and Richards player and see what they're going to upgrade into. If mm -hmm. they want to keep the Pitchfork in their deck, they should definitely have the Tinker. Yeah. Um, but if they're going to be relying more on the Machete and, like, the uh, 41 or 45 automatic, it's probably better for Kate to have it. Yep. So. Yeah. 
Uh, Transmogrify is our last card here. This is a one-cost event. Evade, you may use Book instead of Foot for this evasion attempt. If you succeed and the evaded enemy is not elite, attach Transmogrify to it. Attach enemy gains massive, cannot move. After you evade this enemy, discover a clue to its location. Looks an awful lot like I'm way on the left there. It does. It does. Uh, this card's legit. Um, it's really good. Uh, Kate's going to play really well with it. You're going to have a great time. It's very good in this deck. Yes. Good card. Clue. Yeah, clue. Gets clue. Turns off an enemy. It's like, really nice. Like clue. Yeah. Uh, last card I got here is Well Funded. This is a fortune skill. Commits for a wild. While you control a science or tool asset, Well Funded gains a wild. While you control three or more science and or tool asset, it gains wild, wild instead. This could very easily be Unexpected Courage, but this is more interesting. It's true. It's because, you know, Kate's the scientist and she plays science and tools yeah. and this cares about those, so yeah. that's why it's here. It yeah. also might be better here because if you have three mm -hmm. si three like three like science and or yeah. tools, then uh, I you do probably think. have clues yeah. on them and drawing your personal weakness yeah. is bad. This is three yeah. for that. And yeah. it is also because you have it's generally better, but, <clears throat> yeah, because yeah. yeah. you have your flux stabilizer. You'll yeah, so always it's really be only it's, two, yeah, right? it's yeah. always going to be an unexpected courage. Yeah, yeah, because uh, okay. yeah, that's good. just very good. Good yeah, job. Yeah. Me. <laughs> <laughs> nice yeah. job, past Travis. Yeah. All right, let's go on to Corset and Travis. I'll throw these ones to you. Oh, okay. Uh, this is flashlight. This is a tool, and it helps you investigate by reducing the shroud by two. This card plays very nicely with, uh, it doesn't play at all with the uh, chemistry set, just kidding. Because <laughs> uh, they're both investigate actions, so they're separate. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. The chemistry set, it, you need to investigate with it. Yeah. <laughs> Upgrade Flash, that plays really good with this. It really, does, yeah. yeah. It does, yeah. Uh, no, this is just nice for some of the lower shroud locations. It helps you get clues more consistently. Mm -hmm. Easy. Magnifying Glass is a tool that gives you plus one while investigating. This is like your bread and butter. As that seems <laughs> insane. You just like put, like it just goes into play. You tinker so you're like you're always holding your microscope, and then you just put clues on your magnifying glass, and you can like lightning bolt that like the upgraded version back into your hand, put the clue back on you, put put it back into play, put it out again. What's wrong with that? Yeah. Yeah, no, it seems uh, good. I mean, like, it is, it, it, like it's, it's good, but it really is actually just unexpected courage. So, like, the ceiling is actually, like, relatively, like, low. Oh, yeah. But it is just, like, very efficient. Yeah, no, it's your bread and butter for Seeker investigating. Same with uh, Dr. Milan here. He likes bugs and money. Like he loves money. Yeah. yeah. He costs four. He gives you a book. And after you successfully investigate, you gain a resource. Um... Do you think we could start a successful campaign to get this guy the tool trait? No. <laughs> I just think he's a little bit of a tool. <laughs> Fun, we both know you just want for rules abuse, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll put my clue on my Dr. Malone Christopher. Yeah. I'll make him not take up an ally slot. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I'll play another. Oh, you can't. He's unique. No. Um. Yeah, there is like another science unique level zero ally in Which the set. Which we'll be talking about. Oh, we will? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that Dr. Milan Christopher is better, though. Yes. Because it's yeah, hard not to be. But we, we, we have an honorable mention slide Especially for Especially when playing as written, but don't worry about that, I guess. Mm -hmm. Just enjoy it. We got Emergency Cash here, which gives you $3 to pay for things. Um, like Dr. Milan Christopher, and then you'll never need money again. It's true. I've, we, we, we've lived it. Like, you'll need it, but you'll never want for it. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, as deduction. That's my <laughs> best friend. Yeah, this is two clues when you investigate. Um, that's it. Yep. You get an extra clue. Yeah. Yeah, do the thing you do. Yeah, if like Dr. Yeah. Milan, magnifying glass, your bread and butter, this is water. <laughs> <laughs> One might say it's necessary. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, next, we have Guts, which commits for two brain. Um, and if the skill test is successful, you draw a card. This is important because brain isn't inherently used for anything in the game um, by any like fight or evade or investigate actions. So it's the most common way for the Mythos deck to attack you during the Mythos phase, um, which makes Guts good for pretty much every investigator, especially you with two brain. Mm -hmm. And um, the signature weakness that will also make you test your test brain. Test your brain, yeah, you yeah. got an extra one sneaking around there. So. Uh, this with a mouse mass charge puts you up to six, which is really comfortable. You should be able to pass like any of the most of the brain tests that you actually care about with those. Yeah. Um, yeah. Don't be afraid to throw one at your teammates too to mm -hmm. help them out if they need it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good card. Really good card. We got random manual dexterity here, mostly because we had an extra slot after the ravenous mechanism, but 
sometimes you'll want to evade a thing, you got four foot, you might as well use it. And we got Perceptions, which is uh, to book and draw a card when you are passing the book test. Which you will do. You will do, yes. Yep. Many times, because you don't actually have four, you have five, because you are going to have a Magnifying Glass or Dr. Milan play. <laughs> when we say five, we actually mean six. <laughs> yeah, so this means you're at like seven or eight, <laughs> which means you're, you're going to succeed. Yep. It's yep. just good. It's just going to work. Yeah, it's it just, just works. Work. Yep. All right, on to our honorable mention here. This is Dr. Charles West the third. Um, as Travis said, this guy is worse than Dr. Milan, but there is a build where you can actually play with this guy. Um, but I do agree it is generally going to be worse than a Dr. Milan. Three cost, takes up the ally slot, soaks for one and two. Uh, he is a science, so you can put a clue on him. Mm -hmm. uh, you have additional hand slot, which can only be used to hold a tool asset. And after you successfully investigate by exactly one or three, you can exhaust Dr. Charles West the third to deal one damage to an enemy at your location. Yeah, this guy, like, is, you could fill in those tinker slots if you really wanted him for, uh, if your Wilson Richards player wanted to tinker or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. He has an option for that. Having two allies, like, a little bit awkward, but with your revised core set, you could just upgrade into charisma and make that priority, and you're probably fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. this guy's, like, fine. Doing the damage is... He, he's here for the extra hand slot, right? That's what he does. Yes. And he takes a brain damage. And then the you. extra, the damage, if it happens, is kind of just like gravy on top. Yeah. It is gravy. Um, it's going to happen fairly inconsistently unless you're taking that route, and in which case it's going to be a little bit, uh, um, a little <clears throat> bit more consistent. But still, it's a little bit tough. This guy's very comparable to uh, Alice Luxley, I think, which I personally have. If you guys don't know, Alice Luxley is a four cost ally that soaks two and two and guardian, gives you plus one book. And after you successfully investigate or is it discover clue your location i think it's discover think clue. It's just discover. discover a clue you can exhaust her and then she deals one damage to enemy your location which is very similar to this guy um except that you get to do it whenever you whenever you get a clue and this guy requires you to successfully investigate by one or three mm -hmm. which is more inconsistent and the the damage from alice is just yeah it's never quite uh never shows up <laughs> when you need it really yeah i guess and so this guy's i think gonna have a similar issue mm -hmm. yeah um yeah. Don't let that dissuade you from trying it. I could definitely be wrong. Yeah, I think I think we'll imagine we're gonna try him one day in the future. I think there's a uh, cool stuff, but yeah, like we yeah. wanted to play them both together. Let's do I it. think uh, I think he is kind of cool for the like you play him with the chemistry set and you're like if I pass. Yep. Good uh -huh. thing. Yep. Yep. Uh -huh. And then also once we get to the upgrades and we see uh well, yeah, let's go, let's go, let's this see what's uh, this guy's okay. definitely like in the stay away tier though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For the the the, the dating, role map. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. No. He does fill in like the the succeed by one, succeed by three at the um way too chemistry set doesn't. Game. Yeah. Which like it does. You just always get a good thing when you investigate the chemistry set. Which is nice, it right? Is get nice. a clue on top of winning. Unless yeah. you succeed by good. zero, in which case you blow up the chemistry set. No, it, you fail. No, by fail two. by two is chemistry. Exactly, two is explodes. No, succeed by zero gives you two resources. Six. Which is actually oh, super whatever. sick. It is super yeah, succeed sick. by six, yeah, and then you're, it just like, it gets too big. Yeah, they're like, you're too good. Yeah. He actually steps out of the yeah. card is like, congratulations, you have found the secret of Arkham yeah. Horror. And you're like, you get a special voice line for it in the video game. Yeah. All right. Uh, first thing we got to talk about here is Steady Handed. This is a two cost, one experience asset. It's a talent and a science. Limit one per investigator is a reaction. When you would succeed at a skill test, exhaust Steady Handed. <laughs> you either succeed by one more or one less. And if you see this, succeeded by exactly two, heal one horror. It's insane for the succeed by archetype. Yes. This is like you get two experience in the first scenario. This is what you're buying. Yeah. <laughs> and this guy's all, he's all like, yeah, it's great. This guy didn't need his leg. Yeah. <laughs> um,. It also like the passive horror healing is really good. And if you are like using your chemistry set, it is just like you just choose what you want to do pretty much. Yeah. Notably, it's you only use it if you succeed. Uh, so you can't stop your my, your chemistry set from blowing up if you do fail by two. That's yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Also, Rex Murphy, eat your heart out. Uh, confound. Two cost event. Uh, inside trick. Parlay. Choose an enemy location and test book X, where X is the chosen enemy's evade value. If you succeed, discover two clues your location. Then, if the chosen enemy is non elite, automatically evade it. It does not ready during the next upkeep phase. Uh, just a card lets you get clues and evade an enemy. Notably, with the way the rules work, you actually need to discover two clues to do the evading the enemy part. Just something to keep in mind. Cool. Because uh, <laughs> uh, it has the then comma rule. Uh huh. Sure. Um, but uh, it's gonna work for that. Like that's like the the times where it doesn't is gonna be so minor, and it's just you know use yeah. this on two clue locations. Very appropriate or more. flavor text. Um, yeah. I'm pretty sure that this is like. <laughs> 
you're supposed to be the person not carrying the books, and you're just knocking the guy's books. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, no. Yeah. I don't think. Uh, no. I don't Pretty think sure. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, microscope, the upgraded version, four experience, takes the hand slot, uh, two cost. After an enemy location is successfully evaded or defeated, place one resource on microscope as evidence. So notably, it no longer exhausts to use the reaction ability. Double action, investigate, you plus two book for this investigation for each evidence on microscope to a max of plus six book. <laughs> if you succeed, you may spend up to three evidence to discover that many additional clues. <laughs> I feel like Four I feel clues. like Travis is experiencing these cards like <laughs> with me. There's so many plus six and four clues, Justin. This is it like is. ancient stones, except you just get to use it all the time. Yeah, it's very good. Uh, the the level zero version, I think, a microscope is incredibly playable, and this is just like more of a good thing. Yeah, bring this in the dream years with all them the good oh, <laughs> yeah, with all the the swarming enemies, yeah. <laughs> Uh, card's pretty cool. Uh, Hand-eye coordination, one cost, one experience, event, insight, fast. She can play insights. She can play insights. Fast, but only during your turn. Resolve an action Suicide. ability on a tool or a weapon asset you control without paying its action cost. Insane with microscope. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, notably... Uh, okay. It's Let's... like two actions, Justin. No, no, it's, no, it's actually it's only it's one. It's actually only one. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I know, I know, I know. I know. Yeah, hear me out. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit gibberish, but... Uh, without paying its action cost, that only reduces its action cost by one. Why does that say by paying one less action? Great question. I don't know. But with, if there's another card. Um, I'll just we'll do a little. Uh, what's it called? Um, push to the limit. No, I went back to the beginning. That's okay. We'll get <laughs> back there. Uh, this card is when uh, I'll put it on the screen for Including people. Including its action cost. Yeah. Okay. So that's the difference. I yeah, this is ignoring all costs, and that is like... Literally. Yeah. So this is... I, I agree it is, it is quite clunky. It said including its action cost, and this is also ignoring its action cost. Yeah, it's... Uh, I don't, unfortunately, make the rules. I'm just... I'm just... I'm just the messenger right now, divvying this up. But this is uh, what it is for that. So it's only reduced by one for hand-eye coordination, mm -hmm. but something like push to the limit is the whole thing. But I mean, with all this said, uh, do being able to use your microscope for one action is still very Those are powerful. the same thing. I agree, but they're actually, they're not. No, and that coordination, you can, you get the two actions. Yeah, it's like guns not being ranged, it's almost. Like, I, I legitimately don't see a difference oh, between yes. those. I know, I, I, I don't really I, either, but wh it's, Where does this knowledge come from? Uh, you can ask in our Discord. They have all the. They they'll explain it much better than I do. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is this is like. A, no, that's not how it is. You can, uh, yeah. you can ask ask HR. But Travis, you want to see the mic in its first? Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the upgraded uh, myconids. Uh, the uncanny growth is still the same. Investigate after this resolves. Place one resource on ravenous myconids growth for each point you succeed by. Um, they all cost four experience. Uh, the the bonded cards is now a lightning bolt. Sentient strain is uh, is lightning bolt search your thing. As a reaction, when an investigator draws a non-mechanist treachery card, if their location shroud is equal to or less than ravenous mic its growth, you cancel that treachery's effects and discard it and remove all growth from ravenous mic in it. extremely good. Yeah, it's very powerful. And it's any investigator. So, like, if you are scared of a uh, brain test, you can stop it. But if you draw something else and someone else draws a brain test they're scared of, mm -hmm. you can just stop it. Notably, it gets rid of all the growth, so you can't bank um, for future ones for that. That's fine. Uh, carnivorous strain, it is the same kind of thing, but you choose a non-elite enemy your location with equal or fewer remaining health than the amount of growth on ravenous myconid and it eats the enemy you defeat that enemy and remove all growth from ravenous myconid and then we got nurturing strain which is he this guy notably soaks for three and three and his lightning bolt is remove all growth from ravenous myconid either heal that much damage and a horror from ravenous myconid or move that much damage from him uh, from uh, uh Hello, investigators or ally assets to ravenous myconid so i think the nurturing strain is the weakest of the three um, it's also the least cool. Why would you do that when you could cancel encounter cards or, or eat enemies? kill enemies? Yeah, I just want to eat enemies. I just want yes. to eat enemies when they show up. Um, <laughs> you just think like, I'll eat them. I'm not going to fight It's just like, what am I supposed to do? It's what like, do I do? <laughs> finally Why enemy, am I here? Finally an enemy to kill. No, I eat them. No, 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 no. I eat them for a lightning bolt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I think the carnivorous strain <laughs> is is pretty is pretty bonkers. I love that yellow, yellow privilege. Yep. Uh, but I, I love this guy. I think his flavor is really fun, and the flavor of ghouls are also really fun to him. Yeah. He loves to eat them. The flavor of lots of things is really fun, though. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think, like, 
you're, you're not going to miss for sentient or carnivorous. And, like, if you're playing with, like, a Hank Sampson out of the box, I think the Nurturing Strain is, like, a, a good choice for that as well. Mm -hmm. um, but just uh, grab the Seymour that you like and have him eat things, you know? All right. Isn't, isn't that the Audrey? That is, yeah. Seymour yeah, is Seymour's, Seymour's Rick Seymour's Moranis. Yeah, Seymour's yeah, Rick yeah, Moranis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, Travis also added a curse package into this uh, because there are a lot of curse cards that you can actually play with Kate Winthrop in this cycle mm -hmm. um, that mm -hmm. I think if you're going to be upgrading them, you need to look at this entire package, um, except for like maybe a case like Gabriel Carrillo, who is just like a really good asset. Um, depends on if you need resources or cards more, you can kind of switch between them. But if you're looking at like Prismatic Spectacles and some of these other ones, you're going to want to look at this whole package. I'll yeah, start like, with... Yeah. Esoteric Method is something you could play with though it. <laughs> uh, and like you could definitely play Control Variable if someone else in your group is playing a Curse deck. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the, I mean the Prismatic Spectacles. Like some of them, you could probably get with playing one of these if someone else in your group is playing Curse. But yeah. Honestly, you should just both play Curse and then... You, and then it's just even great. It's, yeah. really, it's all good. Uh, Gabriel Carrillo is four cost. As Bryn said in the last video, if an ally is four cost, you're expecting a stat boost, and there it is. You get plus one book. And as a reaction to the start of your turn, you can add a Curse token to the Chaos Bag to draw a card. No, you... you, you yeah. Yeah, it, it isn't forced, but you forced, should you should like, force it. You should. Yeah, you might as well. Um, Prismatic Spectacles takes up the accessory slot. Two cost, two experience. As an action, add one curse token to the chaos bag and investigate. You get plus two skill value for this investigation. If a curse token is revealed during this investigation, you may exhaust Prismatic Spectacles to discover an additional clue at your location. Turn every... every scenario into Shades of Suffering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, I got the Shades, baby. <laughs> Yeah, everything's kaleidoscope. Color. Yeah, <laughs> I can't yeah. see. I can't see. <laughs> Just keep bumping into walls. Uh, yeah, with curse tokens, this is really nice. Uh, turn mm -hmm. anytime you um, discover a clue into an additional clue. It's like a deduction. Esoteric method. Uh, four wild icons. Practice and cursed. After this ends, add one curse token to the chaos bag for each point the performing investigator either succeeded or failed by. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest. This card is actually going to quite commonly add one or two curse tokens. It's fine. Uh, which is like kind of nice and then sometimes if you want to use it to add curse tokens you just like put it into a book test right luke robinson stonks are to the fucking moon with this expansion oh hell yeah four practice makes perfect <laughs> or four uh promise of powers for practice makes perfect yeah you got the mouse mask too like oh yeah my he's God. going he's going uh <laughs> he's going places yeah uh, control variable, one cost event, insight, science, cursed, fast. She can play it for three reasons. Wow. Uh, fast, <laughs> play after an investigator reveals a curse token during a skill test your location, discover a clue at your location. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's, if you're in, if people, if you are playing curses or someone's playing curses, this is going to do something. And if it doesn't, mm -hmm. it commits for a brain in a book. So. Someone plays really well with her flux stabilizer as well. Yeah. If, where you can like have someone else do a test at your location or something like that, and then they reveal a curse token, you get your clue, you get the unexpected courage for your evasion attempt, that kind of stuff. Hell yeah. All right, Travis, why don't you take us home with the upgraded Corsa uh, Okay. Well, we have magnifying glass here. This is, uh, you can, it costs zero, and you can pick it up if there's no clues in your location. Which is just instead, this, uh, the main utility for Kate is that you can pick it up and put the clue on Kate and then you put it back to play and then you uh, put another clue on it and you do that for as long as you need to. Um, yeah. We have cryptic... Uh, no. Oh, sorry. Notably as well, um, when the, uh, the force ability is when the asset you control leaves play, um, you place a clue on your location. So if you do it with the magnifying glass, you're going to have to pick it back up. Um, mm -hmm. But there's a lot of synergy you can do on that with the whole thing but just like having a way to like repeatedly be able to get unexpected courages is really nice honestly insane with clue drop insane with clue drop yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh we have cryptic research which is a pretty good card um not super exciting or anything like that but it's really really good it's for experience which is quite a bit and it costs zero and it's fast you play it only during your turn and then you pick anyone at your location and they draw three cards that's really good. It's it's one of those cards that you read and you're like, yeah, this is good, but it's really boring. And then you play with it and you're like, holy shit, this is actually so good. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like you just, I don't know what I'm going to do this turn. I'm like missing a piece to my thing or something. I think like, I'll just draw three cards to start yeah. off and like okay. then figure things out. Yeah. Like I'll yeah. just take three actions and then three draw actions and then play my turn. And with a limited collection too, with what we're designed it to be built with that four experiences actually you're going to get there pretty quick because you're going to like run out of the other pieces mm 
Uh, we have a Relic Hunter and Charisma here. It's honestly not that much from the Revised Core. Um, the Relic Hunter is nice. You can roll around with like two chemistry sets or like your chemistry set and your Prismatic Spectacles or whatever. Yeah. Um, the Charisma, again, you can hang out with Dr. Milan and the other Succeed by Guy or Dr. Milan and the Cursed Guy or whatever you combination of those oh, you feel like. Dr. Milan and Gabriel? Oh. Yeah, you just have base six book. Just, oh. Yeah, base six book, take two upkeeps a turn. Don't yeah. worry about it. It's no, Bryn, it's balanced. They co it costs you eight resources to put them both in a fight, Bryn. Yeah, where are you going to get that from your Dr. Milan? <laughs> yeah. and, that, and that's it! <laughs> That is it for Kate Winthrop. Thanks for hanging out. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing to our channel. Or if you have any comments about Kate Winthrop or any of these cards, let us know down in the comments. And next week, we're going to be talking about Alexandra, and we're going to be parlaying, baby. So we'll see you all then. In the meantime, have a good one. And as always, GG's.